what is wrong, I keep going away. Is it there? Hello? Is this thing on? Can you hear me now? So we just sang a song about joy, and I kept thinking, if you're happy and you know it, tell your face. <laughs> oh, now you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, there you go. No, some of you look joyful. Yeah. Some of you look like you got to go to the bathroom. Anyway, it's raining. Praise God. Right? Yeah. So anybody who knew somebody that said, man, we really need some rain, go home and smack them. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Welcome to East Baptist, though. The, the few, the proud, the chosen. You are going to heaven because you came to church <laughs> during Tropical Storm Alberto. It's amazing what a little rain will do to somebody. It's just crazy. Anyway, we're going to have a good time. Uh, that's all we're here for. I don't know about you, but that's what we're here for. Uh, so here's how we welcome at Beach Baptist. You turn around and answer a question. So this comes from our the lady who does children on a normal day, but she has no brakes on her car. So this morning she was like, I don't understand. She has no brakes on her car, but she couldn't come today because it was raining. So I don't know what you do when there's no brakes on your car and it's not raining. <laughs> if you've rode with her before, think about that. So she's thinking about getting her brakes done this week. Good idea, Mary. Good idea. Um, so, but she sent this question in, and it, it's kind of apropos. So turn to your neighbor and tell them how you like your tuna, in oil or in water. That's thanks to Mary. Grand earth has quaked before, moved by the sound of his voice, and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you through it all through it all it is well through it all through it all my eyes are on you and it is well with me Far be it for me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea Y'all sing with me And through it all, through it all my eyes are on you and through it all through it all it is well through it all through it all my eyes are on you and it is well it is well so let go my soul trust in him the waves and wind still know his name 
God, may our lives live so that it emulates that it is well. In your name we pray. Amen. you all be seated. Somebody taking kids or are they staying in? I know Mary's gone. You know, the whole brick thing. <laughs> what? Well, you can ask them if they want to go. But asking the adults. <laughs> hey, we could play musical chairs up here. See ya. Oh, you're so sweet, so pretty. So good. 
And aren't they cute when they're somebody else's? <laughs> they are. It's raining. Technology's slow today. Well, y'all are really deadbeats. You're going to have to wake up a little bit. Because I'm already primed for the fact that you can't go anywhere else. There's nothing for you to go do, so we might as well be here, right? Isn't that the way life is? Nothing else to do? Let's just go to church. No, we, um... What? Oh, okay. So we're going to walk in the fog today. It's apropos, kind of. Um, now, we talked about favor. So my goal is that we, at least as we start to walk in what we call God's favor, that it's so, so second nature or so, maybe move that to first nature, so first nature, that you almost just kind of do it. You ever, have you ever walked around in what you call a fog? Yeah, I, you, and you're like, I don't really know how I'm doing it, or, you know, I don't really remember what I'm doing. It's just kind of like I'm doing it. So almost like, almost like autopilot. So that, that's, that's my theory, is that we can get to the point, not to where we don't recognize it, because that's actually a point today, but it, it is natural for us to walk in what we're calling God's favor. We, so we talked about it last Sunday. We really dig in, dug into it a little bit on Wednesday. Uh, so today we're going to kind of maybe finish it up and, and talk about what it looks like to actually walk in God's favor. Now, we, we, we blew up a few fallacies last week uh, about what God's favor looks like. God's favor is not everything's going well. God's favor is not like you win the lottery, you get a new car. Uh, those things happen while you're in God's favor sometimes, but Everything happens while you're in God's favor. Everything. Uh, so God's favor is automatically around you all the time. So it, it's there. You're in it. The problem is you don't recognize it or you don't really understand walking in it. Uh, and so hopefully today we can kind of get there and, and kind of figure out that we're actually doing it. One, here's the first way. If you want to increase your awareness of walking in God's favor, you need to start with saying thank you all the time. You need, the Bible says you need, so it was, is it Psalm 100? That's the one I got, type of my arm. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So it's, you're automatically being thankful. I don't think you should ever start a prayer without starting off with thank you. Honestly. When you start your prayers with please, you're not working in favor. You're not living it, you don't under, you're, you're not getting it necessarily, that you're already in favor. When you start out with the request, he says enter his gates with thanksgiving. He means when, as you come into his presence, as you're acknowledging his presence, you start with thankfulness. See, we don't, though. We, we look at our situations, and we want to get to his presence, or we want him to come into our presence. So we start with the, you've got to make this right before I can be okay with you, God, scenario. Instead, we start with thankful. We, here's where I am. I understand where I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be thankful for it, and then we'll talk about what I think my situation ought to be. And, and a lot of times, that part's never going to change where you want to be, because you're using your human stuff to figure it out. But if you can come in with thankfulness, you can at least have the ability or at least the notion that you're in his presence and that he's there. So when you start thanking him for what he's doing immediately, you at least acknowledge that he's there, Right? But when you start with the request, you're not even acknowledging he's there. You're asking him to come in. You're asking, come on over here, God. Things are getting rough. How about just thanks for already being here while it's rough? And then, I don't like it. I'd like for you to change my situation. Understanding you may not, but I'd like it. What, what if our prayer life really started to be honest with God? What if it really started to look like that? What if you were actually really thankful first? Let's start there. What, what if you really would stop trying to get God on your side and understand that favor happens all the time and that favor's on you and you're thankful for that favoritism? Anybody felt like God's favorite this week? 
No? Oh, a few of you. Good, good, good. Because, I mean, he tells us that we're his favorite, that he did everything he did just for you. I mean, there, there's a concept out there that says you could be, could have been the only person on the planet, and God would have done everything he did just for you. Now, it sounds kind of egotistical, doesn't it? Well, that's what God said, though. He loves you that much to do what he did, and you should be thankful for it. We should see, are you trying to turn something on? It's not going to work. Every day. Plays with the fan. What about your church? You ever notice? Some churches seem to have God's favor. Like all the chairs are full. They never have budget issues. They always have everything they need. You ever notice God's favor that way? Thank you. No, that's not God's favor. God's favor, for a church, God's favor is being able to be present in what he's got you doing. God's favor on your church here, Beach Baptist, is to be able to do the things that he's placed us in the middle of. Not even be able, be willing to do what he has, to to seize on an opportunity. That's God's favor, to be able to live in that. And, And here's what's so cool. You know, your church exists for the people who are sitting in these chairs, and then sometimes throughout the year, the people who sit in those chairs, and then the million people who are actually watching online right now, right? So, I mean, we're like the biggest church on the planet already. Um, okay, potentially a million or two, but we don't know how many today. More today than normal, let's put it that way. But with that number, just whatever that number is, I hear us all the time, especially from a bigger church pastor. This is what's really funny. Y'all do a lot for a little church. And I'm like, thanks, jerk. <laughs> and then I tell him, size don't matter, dude. We're taking care of business. We got what's going on. And we're in the middle of what's going on. But I take that as a compliment, actually. So people see You do, as a church, you do what God has placed in front of you, and then they get all kind of weirded out, like, wow, you do a lot. You do a lot. I mean, we normally bring diapers. There'll be a lot of messy floors this morning. Y'all forgot your diapers. But anyway, we, yeah, you don't want to get the diapers wet. That would be counterproductive. I agree. I agree. I I totally agree. Totally agree. You can bring them anytime. You just bring them in later, right? But yeah, so just in the, in, the, in the diaper realm, people tell me all the time, I cannot believe, the lady that clutches, like, I cannot believe you all are able to bring diapers. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. You see, God's favor is the, the ability, but also the willingness, but also the opportunity, and then you being like right in the middle of it. And what I think is so awesome is that we'll, we'll do something like that as a church, and then tomorrow there will be this weird little opportunity and we'll do that one too. And then that verse comes up that says, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. You see, God gives you an opportunity, and then you turn around and you give it back to him. We talked about that with Moses last week. Take the blessings that God has given you and give them back. And then God will turn around and give them back again with another couple. And you take those and you, you, you use them and then you give them back. And he continually has this accounting with you and he he never ever runs out and neither do you so that so that's favor there and that that's favor in your life and it's crazy how favor is everywhere when when you start to see it hey how many of you all have ever wanted to buy a new car okay a different car let's not use the word new because smart people don't buy new cars (laughs) i just see that i did that i'm smart because i don't buy new cars and anyway you ever notice that if, let's say you wanted to buy a Peugeot. Y'all know what those are? I don't either. I could have just made it up. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so let, let's pretend you want to buy a Peugeot. It, it's actually a real car. Do you know what car you will see on the road every day? Go ahead. It's a fun word. Say it. Peugeot. That's right. You, you'll see a Peugeot. Okay, so let's say you want to buy a Pinto. <laughs> 
I understand. See, now we're all on the same page. I got it. What car will you see driving past you at every stoplight for the next week? What car will be there? A Pinto. Now, aren't there automatically, magically more Pintos and Peugeots on the road just because you decided to buy one? No. It's because you're looking for it. It's because it's on your mind. That's the way the accounting of God's favor works. As you start to look for it, we, we called you favor finders last week. As you actually start to look for them, favor, when you start to see God's favor, you start to say, oh, wow, there's favor. Oh, wow, there's favor. It, it, did favor just increase because? No. You just now see it. That's what I want to get us to. I want us to be able to be focused on him and what he's doing and see his favor in our lives. So when you're in a market for favor, you'll see favor. One famous preacher said, and favor is not fair. You know what that means? You ever, you ever seen somebody who saw God's favor and then turned around and tried to give God a favor back? Okay, it looks like this. God has blessed me. I think I will go volunteer this week. Ah, and I understand. Oh, God has really been, a uh, man, God has really been shining down. You ever, you ever seen God shining down or heard about God shining down on someone? I don't even know what it means, but people say it. God's really been shining down. You know what? I'm going to write a bigger check this week. You know, you're going to give God a favor back. That's not how it works. God just keeps putting favor out, right? And, and in your attitude of seeing it is, is the giving it back and understanding where it comes from. But you'll never, ever be able to catch up anyway. I like the one, you can't outgive God, right? I got that, I got that. But that's not what we're talking about, favor. There's not an exchange of favors. God doesn't need your help in the favor category. God's not going, I'll give you a little so that you can give me much over here. That's not what that means either. Right? So if God wants a lot, he's got to give you a little. Because you're the keeper of the lot. No. God keeps putting out the favors and you start recognizing it in your life. And then you get to walk in it. You're the beneficiary of all the favor. That's how it's supposed to be. That's what he wants for your life. I'm, I'm sorry, that's pretty good preaching. Somebody should have said amen or something. I don't know. It don't matter. Here's their definition. Can you find last week's definition of favor? I'll just give it to you. She probably deleted it. Here's what we defined favor as in, in, our, in our terms here. Uh, it's the guarantee of his presence and the provision of his power to accomplish his special purpose, purpose in and through our lives. So it's the guarantee that he's there. Guarantee is there. Guarantee that he's given you the power to handle what he's doing around you and in through you. And then... The, to, and then to accomplish what he's got going on, right? You understand that? A lot of times I ask for God's favor to do what I got going on. That's different. That, that brings in the I got to make sure things are on my side. I got to make sure God understands what's going on down here because I need him. To, if I, listen, if we don't have God in this, it's never going to work. You ever, you ever been around somebody that did that? Right? You set together, you create a plan, and then at the end of it you go, now let's ask God to bless it. Dude, why don't you just start in the beginning? Why don't you just start out with, why don't we ask God what's going on and see if we can join? Instead, this is what we're going to do, and then we're going to ask God to jump in. Because if he doesn't help us, it'll never happen. No duh. Never should start in the first place if he didn't give you the idea. That's what favor looks like. So i got three things to tell you this morning. Three points. I'm trying to be a good preacher. I need three points. They don't rhyme. So we'll get there. But you're going to need to write these down. And nobody, ha you got your pen? Okay, here we go. Write down this word. Expect. Expect. Because this, if you, somebody asked this, Patty, well, how do you actually do this? You know, it's good to say I'm looking for it, I understand it, I, I see it's around me, but can you act, or how do you actually, this is the how-tos, this is the actual write them down. And I'm not teasing you this week. There's actually things you can do to do this. Number one, expect. You've got to expect what God is doing. And write this phrase down under expect. You ready? Right. Frame your world with favor. That's easier to write than it is to say. 
And if I say flavor today, just pretend I said favor, because that's what I meant. Frame your world with it. Look at everything in the world as God's favor. And I mean everything. I don't care who won the election. Look at it from favor. No matter what's going on, favor. No matter what decision is made, favor. No matter if your tax return check is smaller or larger than you thought it should be, frame it around favor. No matter what's going on on Facebook, frame it around favor. Oh my goodness, I didn't even give her that. She is, she's, she's stepping it up a notch. Good stuff. Last week we mentioned two Bible characters. I told you that. Moses and Mary. One of them had to lead a bunch of people around the wilderness for 40 years in not really good conditions. And yet God says, you're my favorite. He had to do horrible things for 40 years as God's favorite. That was God's favor in his life. He had to frame his entire Lord. He had to look at it as favorite. Then we looked at Mary, who had to give birth to an illegitimate son. Sorry, Jesus, in your definition, would be considered illegitimate. She had to give birth to an illegitimate son in horrible conditions, and then watch him live a life that everybody hated, and then die for really what they thought no reason. And yet, she is highly favored. You see, if you frame your world from the perspective of the only thing you see, you don't see favor. But when you start to expect it and frame your world around it, then everything you start to see becomes favor. I, I love the people who like to decide, well, is this good or is this bad? Well, God says it's just all Him. So everything has to technically be good. From your perspective. Now, this is not hooey dooey, Dale Carnegie, everything's roses crap. This is frame it from a position of favor. I start to look at everything through the lens of God Himself. I try to get it from His perspective. And if I can't understand what He's doing, I just accept the fact that He's in control of it. And that's okay. So I'm going to frame it and I'm only going to see it from what I think or what, what, not what I think, but what he is trying to get me to see. Listen, remember Esther? Esther found God's favor in the Bible. And she, she got to lead a nation because of it. How about Ruth? R Ruth, Ruth found favor, right? And she, she was picking wheat with the servants, drinking out of the jugs of the servants, drink out, doing all that, and then ends up right at the right hand. Now, if you understand that story, that's you. You are Ruth. And that's favor. The Bible tells us that, that Jesus himself found favor among God and man. Favor is all over the place. Nehemiah, come on. Nehemiah found favor, but then do you remember what his life looked like after he found favor? Can you imagine being Nehemiah and having to fight over a fact that you were trying to build a wall just to protect some people, and, and, and that's favor? Dude, if I was Nehemiah, let the wall go. Let them have it. I don't even care. But Nehemiah, no, no, I found favor. I've been picked for this. And, and if I was picked for it, I've got to do it. I've got to move into it. Wow. And then your life, and it's your life. You see, the Bible says you found favor, and now everything about your life is favor. The, the things you're going on in your life, favor. The struggle, the phone call, the, the financial, the marriage, everything, favor. It, it, no matter how bad the news, how good the news, favor. You see, when you start to frame your world around it, you can start to understand that it doesn't matter what happens. I can still find favor. Favor. A lot of people say, I like to find God in everything. Well, he's already there. You just have to see him. And we're calling that favorite. Now, there's a bunch of favorite scriptures. I got them listed up there for you. Um, we'll call them the favorite five. All in favor, say amen. <laughs> Y'all didn't even get that. You got that? All in favor, say amen. Favor, whatever. Wow. 
Okay, Leviticus 26, 9, verse 1. I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. God promises favor to his people. And, and these are people who are in the middle of it. I mean, they're in, they're in the crap, man. They're in the hole. I will look upon you favorably, and I will multiply your people. Can you imagine being those people? And God saying, I'm going to look on you favorably and multiply you. And you're in the middle of it, and you say, I don't really, I don't want anybody else. I don't need any more people in here. This is bad enough, right? You ever heard anybody say that about this world? I, don't, I wouldn't wish anybody to bring any more kids into this world, man. It's bad, right? You heard that? Oh, good. I'm glad some of you have. That's the same thing. Same thing. But favor doesn't look at it that way. Uh, second one, uh, Psalm 512, right? I'll just say next one. You can put it up there, but I don't remember what they were called. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. In, in the version that I actually read that from, you, you surround them with your favor. You, it's actually all around you. Favor actually protects you. How many of you all think, literally, you look back at your life, maybe a month, six months, it doesn't feel like I was protected. I mean, just think about it, because many people have a lot of stuff going on, and, and you look back and you're like, it doesn't feel like I was protected. Here's a sobering thought. You were, and what it would look like if you weren't. So think about how hard it was for you to get joy during whatever circumstance. How hard it was. And imagine trying to do that without favor. That, that should make you think. You heard somebody say, well, it can be worse? That's true. It could be. You take God's favor out of any mix and everything you've ever experienced could be worse. I don't want that. I don't even want to go through the good days any worse. I mean, the good stuff. I don't even want to mess with it without favor. I want to see favor in it. Uh, Psalm uh, 84, 11. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. Was that the one? Yeah. So he gives grace and glory, favor and honor. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. What is right? He is right. It doesn't mean behave right. It means do what is right. It means follow him. And he will not withhold anything. You have access to all the good stuff. Doesn't feel very good. You're defining it wrong. He is the good stuff. Uh, next one, I think it's Psalm, uh, Proverbs 34, right? Three, Proverbs 3, 4. Then you will find favor with God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. It says be honorable. Be, as you follow God, you'll have this favor with God and with people. Who care? Anybody care if you have favor with people? Oh, no, none of you. <laughs> you're supposed to. <laughs> Anybody want to have favor with people? Now that you know you're supposed to? Yeah, everybody. Good. Yeah, so you're supposed Why would I care if I have favor with people? Meanwhile, I'll just leave me alone. People ought not worry what I'm doing. People ought not be paying attention to me. Uh, but they ought to do take care of their own self. Well, it's fine, but the Bible says that you want a good reputation with people because you're representing him. Proverbs 3, 4. We forgot to put it up there again. Did you ever raise your kids? How many of y'all got kids? How many of y'all were a kid? Okay, so everybody. Uh, Is your parents, or have you ever said this? Well, you remember whose you are when you get out of here. I got a reputation to protect. Right? You ever said that to your kids? Or you, maybe when you walk into church. <laughs> no, but hey, don't act like you always act. Right? You tell your kids, right? You, you want, because the reputation of the parent follows the child. Sorry. It does. That stings. <laughs> I started to think about mine. <laughs> it's not my fault. They're their own. No. See, God says, as you're out there and, and you're walking with me and you're walking in my favor, then your reputation and mine go up. You have my favor and then you have others' favor. And it's actually very important. Because through the favor of others, he is seen. He is represented. You mean it's not just about me? No. It's actually nothing about you. It's just about him and everybody else. That's favor. Crazy, but favor. All right, jump out ahead. You ever heard anybody? Okay. 
You ever, I know I do that a lot. You ever ever say, that's just the story of my life? Right? You know, you're, you're going to the mall, it's raining, and there's now no parking spots anywhere near the front. Right? Or did anybody pull up in church right when it started raining? You're like, it's like sprinkling, and you're like, oh, this is all right, it'll be okay. And then as soon as you pull in, there's a downpour. Was that anybody? Yeah, the late one. Uh, <laughs> but that's the time, normally, that you walk, when you pull in, you're like, oh, that's the story of my life. You know what that is? That's not framing your worldview with favor. And can I say, if you say that, you might need to get a new life director. Because he's writing your story wrong. You see, when you're walking around and you're just waiting for the next bad thing to happen, right? Well, we have that story in our, in our culture that says bad things happen in threes, right? I don't know why. It just People walk around then, they're like, well, I, can't, I don't know what's going to be next, but there's going to be something. You know, they're just constantly worried about the next bad thing. That is not what favor looks like. That is not what walking, that is not expecting, that is not framing your world in favor. That's not what that is. So, I, I got a job, I got a, and I got a job, but I got a job when I was younger, and I was a late bloomer as far as jobs go, uh, but I got my first real job, you know, and I was so happy because they gave me stuff, like a paycheck. <laughs> when you got a real job, you know, real jo anybody got a real job where you got like insurance and vacation time? I, this was me. So I got a job and I got vacation time with it. I'm like, like, I don't have to come to work and you're still going to pay me? Yeah, well, you got to work a little bit to do that. And I'm like, oh, I, got it, I got it. So I would go home. And I was so excited. I'd tell all my friends, dude, do you know? Did you get vacation time with the job? Now, all my friends, they're early bloomers. They're, and they would be just like, oh, yeah, that's normal. What do you mean normal? To them, it was just normal. Kind of like this. Do you remember when you first became a Christian? Or you start, first started to get um, in tune to God in your life? And you really started to dig in? And like you're reading the Bible and you're like, I did not know that was in there. Anybody done that? Or, or you start to get the, the, the happiness right immediately. That you're like, wow, I get to tell people about this. this. This expectation. And then you look around and other Christians are like, yeah, yeah, you'll get used to it. This kind of thing. They, you no longer frame your world when you get so used to it. That's why I said in the beginning, I don't want it to get like, I want it to be autonomous, but not so much that you just forget about it, that it's there. Fog for me is being in it and understanding it's there, but still being thankful for it. See, after a couple of years, vacation time was actually, am I not getting two weeks? Right? It was expected. It was expected. Are you living your life like favor is expected? Are you actually expecting to see it? You got to. All right, second thing, write down. That was one, and it's only 11.25. We're doing fine. Write down, recognize. Recognize. Open your eyes to opportunity. That's what you got to write down after it. Open your eyes to opportunity. Recognize it. So you got you to see it. So I'm framing my world, and I'm expecting it. And then, speaking of stuff you didn't expect to find. Huh. I got glasses. Wow. There was this picture on Facebook this week of, of an older lady, and everybody's watching a race. Did y'all see this? No? Well, I thought it was really important. <laughs> anyway, there's this old lady, and she's watching the race, and she's crowded. There's like all a bunch of people behind her. And everybody else has their phone out, and they're taking selfies. And she's actually watching the race. Weird, I know. But she, so, so the, the premise was, recognize what's going on around you. I mean, be in it, be, be, be involved in it, understand it, see it for what it is. Recognize what's in front of you. 
So it's one thing to expect it, and it's one thing to frame your world around it, but then you've got to see it. You've got to say, you might need to say for a little while, this is favor. This is favor. Recognize it. See it. Say it. Tell somebody else, this is favor in my life. Recognize that it's in your life. You ever seen somebody um, who, who has a, maybe you say they got a, this awesome marriage, it's like mine, and you're like, wow, the favor of God's really on their marriage. I mean, you've said that about me, right? And you should have, it's there. And then you're like, well, I wish my marriage could be like that. Do you understand that we don't make favor? We simply recognize that favor is there, and we live in it. And favor is in your marriage, and you live in it. And favor is in all of your other relationships, and you live in it. You expect it to be there, and then you recognize that it's there, and then you live in it. It's not about trying to get the favor that somebody else has. It's about seeing and recognizing the favor that you've got. And that changes the way you move ab about life. And, and it changes, get this, favor changes based on the season of life you're in. You ever notice that? Favor today may not be favor tomorrow. I, I heard this story, so th this pastor's telling this story about, he, he used to preach and um, he would fly everywhere he went. But y'all know that if you fly a lot and they overbook the plane that they um, offer vouchers, Right? He literally, this was his deal, he would literally wait and hope that they would actually bump him, right? Because he gets more. Anybody else like that? Yeah. That's frugal and sometimes. So, but he would actually change his schedule. He, he would call up where he was going and go, hey, listen, <laughs> you're not paying me to come, um, and I can get $200 if we delay it three or four hours. We're just going to delay it, Okay. And that they would kind of work this out. And the favor was, he was living in favor and he was getting travel vouchers for the next time. And it was moving him along in his ministry. Well, he said then, um, a few, few years later, on down the road a little bit, he doesn't have to do that. He's getting ready to go and he's going to preach at a convention where there's a couple thousand people, you know. And he's like, I get the opportunity to get bumped. And I remembered right then. That used to be favor, but today that's not favor. I now have to use the res uh, my favor resources to actually buy a ticket that may be more expensive to get there on time because I don't get to change my schedule anymore. And I thought about it, I'm like, well, that's kind of a weird analogy, but it makes sense. Favor here may not be favor there. Favor in season means I, I so you're sitting here today and you're single. The whole marriage, somebody else's favor analogy doesn't work for you. Well, what if God is using favor in your life to get you prepared for whenever you are married or when you do meet someone or whenever you take that next step, whatever, you can look back and go, oh, that was favor now. Then it's not going to be favor now. So God moves us through the seasons of our life in favor and change. Recognizing what favor is helps you do better today. I can expect it, I can frame it, and then I can recognize it, and then I can walk in it. There's favor. Third thing. See, that was fast. Respond. It does no good to recognize it. It does no good to expect it unless you're going to respond to it. And write this phrase down. Give yourself over to obedience. That's not the that was last time. Respond. Give yourself over to obedience. Now, hold on. I want to I pat myself on the back. Are you ready? Read the first letter of every phrase. The first letter of every phrase. Phrase, not the words. Fog. See, I told you I was getting to be a good preacher. Fog. That's how you're walking the fog. Remember I told you walking fog? Walking fog. You have to do both. You have to do all these. Um, frame your world with favor. Open your eyes to the opportunity and give yourself the obedience. Give yourself to obedience. Respond to it. you got to do it. You've got to give in to what you see him as 
favor and move in it. I thought it would be more special than that, but whatever. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're special. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I'm not, I'm not walking around expecting God's favor so that my life can change. I'm walking around experiencing God's favor, favor so that I can see just what he's doing. So that I can just be with him and near him. Let me give you some insight. If someone ever asks you, what's wrong with your preacher? <laughs> it has happened. <laughs> if it hasn't, it will. You can now say, oh, he's just walking around in fog. He is. Because I started, I, I, as I'm prepping for this, I, I look way back. And I'm thinking, okay, I didn't recognize God's favor a lot in, when I was growing up or when I was getting, you know, into my adult years. I, I didn't recognize it. I didn't see it. But I can look back and understand that it's there. And I can look back and I can understand that um, this third one, give myself over to obedience, brought me to the place from season to season to get to where we are today. And not, I'm not saying that we, I'm talking about me and my walk with God. So when I think about Sharon and I, we, in 1990-something, eight maybe, started traveling and singing, and we're singing Southern Gospel. And, you know, we're, I, she'd be like, you know what, I think you ought to really speak. You know, I think you ought to, you think you ought to say something to the people. And I'm like, what am I going to say? Right? I wasn't preaching. Didn't have any desire to preach it. What I figured out was she didn't think I could sing, so she thought you should speak. Right? <laughs> I got on and I figured it out. I figured it out. So yeah, I used to sing a lot of songs with her, and then it started getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And now I sang one song, and she's like, well, you can just talk. I got you. All right, so I would do that. And, and th so the opportunities would come, and there's a whole story about how opportunities and how you don't recognize them and, and whether we walk in them or not. But and so through that opportunity mo moved me into uh, a, a little more of that, a little more limited revival type stuff. And I, we would say yes, as so you just always say yes. And God would present an opportunity and say yes, 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 unless you said no, and then it got stupid and God would hit you and you'd learn your lesson. Then you start saying yes again. Well, then a church comes along, and they're like, you know what? We don't have a pastor. Uh, we would like for you to be our interim pastor. Well, I, I preached like I was still an evangelist. Don't ever do that. As an evangelist, you walk in, you tell them what you think about them, and then you leave. You're not going to be there anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, don't do that. So I, I said yes to interim pastor, and, and I did it, and, and I lasted almost three months, maybe three months. Uh, but, but I used that time. I'm like, okay, I'll step into it. I stepped in it, all right, and walked through that path and, and, and moved on and then became open, and, and then we're still traveling, singing a little more, and we're doing that, and, and then we get an opportunity to come to Florida, and we're like, oh, yeah, Florida's nice. Let's go to there. And then we, we come and we sing here, and then I think God has the opportunity. You know, you're walk at that point, I'm starting to understand. You need to just listen to what he's doing in your life and take those steps. Give over. Respond. Expect it. I still hadn't expected it yet, but at least starting to uh, receive it and recognize it and then step into it. And so the opportunity comes to sell everything and, and, and come be a pastor. Oh, I don't, I mean, just sell everything and come down here not to be a pastor because I still didn't like preaching. So we did. And we come down here. And then all of a sudden, you're a pastor. You know, it's like genie in a bottle. Literally, poof, you're a pastor. That's how I became a pastor, in case you're wondering. I know, y'all thought I went to school, and I became educated, and like, I, I, I'm, I'm this good because I'm learned, right? No, no. Literally, one day, God said, you're a pastor. Does everybody get to be a pastor like this? I don't think so. I don't think so. But that's just what happened. And now I look back, and I'm like, holy cow. The amount of favor that I live in, I mean on a daily basis, is ridiculous. And so, so when I say, when people ask what's wrong with your pastor, and you can tell them now, there's a little backstory to that. But they can also say what's wrong with your church. How do they do? Why do they do? Listen, I'm not a normal pastor, and we're not a normal church. And what's really weird is opportunities come and we respond to them 
because we believe as something comes past our door, or comes past my desk, or just comes anywhere near us, and we, we just, what, naively or not, believe that's God. I think we should do it. And we move in the direction of what God is doing. And that's why we're sitting where we are today. That's why you're sitting where you are today. And I understand that's favor. I love it. I love the fact that we have no idea how we do the things we do. Because I have no idea how I do the things I do. And I want you to get to the point where you don't understand how you do the things you do in God's favor. I just want you to see it. I want you to frame your world around it. I want you to open your eyes to it. And then I want you to give in to the obedience of actually doing it. I don't want to live my life looking back going, well, I wonder what would have happened if I had a... Just do it. Walk in this fog of not being your own self, but being him. Finding and seeing God's favor in every part of your life. Not just looking for the good. Understanding that he's there every single minute. And yeah, we've said a lot in two weeks just to say, live like God is always with you. Because he is. You can't change it. You can't get away from it. He's always right in the middle of what you're doing. You're, you're the one who changes. When you understand it, recognize it, and live in it. Let's stand and we'll go. Y'all really are quiet. It's crazy. <laughs> what? It's the rain. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. We do invite you to come back. Rain's going to be over by Wednesday night. Don't worry about it. Uh, family fellowship meal back in the, in the retreat center building at 530. Uh, and then Bible study at 615. Uh, we'll hang out together and have a good time and, and study some more word and dig deep uh, and see. I don't know what's for dinner, but it'll be awesome because, oh, no, you're not cooking yet. That's two weeks. Um, who's cooking this week? Oh, it's silver boobs. They're just, uh, shells and cheese. I know what it is. Everybody for shells and cheese on Wednesday night at 530. Y'all are all coming, right? I'm glad y'all are here because this side of the church would be really empty today. <laughs> They're all in one house. That's their kids. Them twos. That's crazy. There's a lot of them. <laughs> and all them kids, they were theirs. Cold where you're from, isn't it? <laughs> Rainy. Then everything else going on in the bulletin, I want you to be a part of while you're in town, if you're here just for a little while, uh, because you're family when you're here. If not, get busy because you've got to come and help. Thursday nights, all, or Thursday days, all the things that are going on, they're in the bulletin. Happy Memorial Day. Remember why uh, you're able, as the video said, that we are able to celebrate and to be free and, and religiously celebrate like we are today. Uh, it's because of the things that we've done and because of the guy who made the ultimate sacrifice, our Lord and Savior. Say it. Jesus Christ. Amen. Who will pray for us? Go for it.